With all the hype around the new Grand Theft Auto coming out, uh, you know, sometime in the next 15 years, I thought I would take this episode of the Nostalgic Gamers Club to look at what I deem to be a classic. Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, we got the PlayStation 2 Greatest Hits version here. We're going to be going over the cover art, the back cover art, and the instruction booklet that comes inside. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, welcome to the Nostalgic Gamers Club. Let's do this. Grand Theft Auto Vice City was one of the games for me that I just so vividly remember being a very different experience. To me, this game didn't feel like, I don't know, I'd played a lot of Zelda at the time, and I had played a lot of like Animal Crossing and a bunch of GameCube games, a lot of the games that I've covered on this show in the past. And that was kind of my gaming life. And I, I wanted to say before I get into this, I just so vividly remember the first time that I played any Grand Theft Auto game because I wasn't allowed to. I was only, uh, shoot, 12 when this came out. And when Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, I remember that my older brother and his girlfriend at the time, they were playing it. And I was just like, I wanted to see it so bad, but obviously it's pretty raunchy for a kid. So... My parents were like, okay, you can play Grand Theft Auto 3 for five minutes. And so I went in and I played for five minutes and I crashed a car and I was like, this is the coolest game ever. So anyway, Grand Theft Auto Vice City came out in 2002, specifically October 29th, 2002. I was still probably a little young to be playing this. And I realistically, I think I probably waited until I was closer to 13 or 14 to play this. But there was so much in this game that just like reeked of nostalgia for me uh, when I saw this <laughs> this case in my collection from the radio stations that you could turn on to all the different cars and vehicles that you could drive in this. I mean, this game, this game was a 10 out of 10 for me. I had so much freaking fun with Vice City. So I, for anyone who's just listening, I'll describe what I'm looking at here. Obviously, we have the amazing graphic art that says Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And then we have kind of you know the the classic grand theft auto rotating images around the outside here uh we got a helicopter firing machine guns looks like probably a police helicopter we got some dude pulling his shades down uh going to the right here we got somebody riding a motorcycle we have a really cool like i don't know i'm not a car guy but like a lamborghini looking vehicle here we got a guy with some baller shades uh holding his uh, i'll say weapon because you know, YouTube. Um, we have a couple cars blowing up here. We got we got a red car and a police car just like in a huge explosion. Obviously, it's rated M for mature, which is kind of blocking this image of a gentleman on a boat here. And we got some some guy with uh, what looks like a little like lollipop or match sticking out of his mouth. It's kind of hard to tell. And then, of course, I feel like this is on every Grand Theft Auto cover. There's a, a, a bikini clad lady holding a, a martini of some sort. This is the PlayStation 2 Greatest Hits edition. I don't have the the OG edition. And then kind of popping over to the back here. Uh, I'll, I'll read off the back. So up at the top, it says Rockstar presents a Rockstar North game. And then up top here, we have our hero Tommy riding a motorcycle, wielding a, a katana and holding a shotgun. It says, welcome to the 1980s. Welcome to Vice City, a huge urban sprawl stretching from the beach to the swamps and the glitz to the ghetto, a town brimming with delights and degradation, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And then we got just some beauty shots down here. They really loved this sort of sunset look and feel, which again was very 80s. I mean, if you if you look at any of, uh, what's it called, like retro wave, vapor wave, it's all got this sort of Vice City look with the pinks and the sunsets, and it just feels almost surreal. It's like, it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a detective in the late eighties and I'm sitting in my mansion and solving a crime and smoking a cigarette. That's the feel of this whole game. So we have a helicopter riding into the sunset here. We have a boat on the water and we have Tommy standing in front of one of his many, many cars that you can steal underneath that. It says having just made it back to the streets of Liberty city after a long stretch inside, Tommy Versetti is sent to vice city by his old boss, Sonny Farelli. But all does not go smoothly upon his arrival in the glamorous, hedonistic metropolis of Vice City. The copywriting on the back of this is really good. Like, that's, that's some good copy. Tommy is set up and loses everything. Sonny wants his money back, but the biker gangs, Cuban gangsters, and corrupt politicians stand in his way. Most of Vice City seems to want Tommy dead. His only answer is to fight back and take over the city himself. 
And I think this is cool because this is the the uh, game of the year edition, game of the year greatest hits edition. Because this is the greater hit, the, <laughs> I can't talk today. Video's over. Because this is the greatest hits edition, they have a couple of little uh, quotes here that I'm assuming aren't on the standard edition. It says, our jaws hit the floor and stayed there. Uh, and that's from PSM, PlayStation Magazine, I believe. And underneath that, the beginning of a new era from Game Informer. And Sony has always been really on the ball with kind of pushing the envelope of how controllers function. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think that Xbox has the most comfortable controller. I do, though, think that uh, PlayStation, Sony has always had the most kind of tech forward controllers and not that other companies were doing this, but I just think it's cool here. It's like, this is pressure sensitive. Um, it obviously has the vibration function. That was pretty standard at the time. Analog control, the memory card, uh, for PS2, 500 kilobytes for the save, which is wild too, because you think about games like Skyrim now, I don't know, like my, my, my saves on Skyrim, I don't know why I'm referencing Skyrim. I, I say Skyrim now, like it didn't come out 12 years ago. <laughs> I just played Skyrim recently, but anyway, modern games, you're looking at like at least 20 or 30 megabytes per save. I mean, that's, that's just huge compared to what you're looking at for a save here, 500 kilobytes. And of course it's a single player game. This game was rated M for blood and gore, violence, strong language, and strong sexual content. So let's take a look inside. Let's see what we got here. Uh, of course we have the disc itself. I always like to check and see how badly scratched my discs are. Cause I haven't played Vice City in a long time that I, I don't know how well you can see that. That's not, that's not too bad. I've, I've seen worse, but it's, it could use a cleaning for sure. And let me tell you, I freaking love this Vice City tourist guide. Uh, they didn't want to call it instruction booklet apparently. <laughs> and I think it's kind of cool here too. Cause we have Every letter of Vice City has an image in it. Some of these are from the cover art. Some of them are not, but it just gives you a feel for what this game was kind of going for. It was very cartoony, very uh, almost larger than life and how things happened. I love that there's this postcard when you open it up as well. So it just says, welcome to Vice City. We got Tommy standing there with a shotgun in his hand on the beach. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's Vice City for you, baby. We have a, uh, a lady in a bikini rollerblading here in the lower left. And it's just talking about the controls, um, which were relatively complex. Honestly, I mean, I'll hold this up to the camera so I can see a little bit better. But I mean, everything had a function and kind of like a secondary function. There was a lot to do in this game. And so I, I think it makes sense that the controller bindings were relatively in depth. And now with this game, we were getting to the time of the internet being a viable resource for information about games. So, but it was new. It was still relatively new for that. So this is kind of cool. Like there's facts about Vice City. So there's the history, the climate, government and politics, economy, religion, population and people. And each of these has uh, like a really in-depth little section of copy written underneath it. So like, I don't know, under economy, it says Vice City's economy relies heavily on tourism and the black market. <laughs> Which is so funny. Like as if somebody would be like, yeah, our economy is great. It's thriving on the black market. There is a lot of money floating around Vice City, some of it real, some not, and much of it changes hands in large quantities and moves pretty quickly, flowing rapidly through the hands of those who know how to spend it. And I just love this because instead of just saying, hey, here are the controls and the types of vehicles you can have, they make it feel like you actually are having a little tourist guide. And so there's getting around by car, by motorbike, by boat, by seaplane, well, it says by air, but you can go by seaplane or helicopter uh, on foot, which is another way that, of course, one could get around. And they even have like the fake ads that show up in the game and on the radio. They even have one of those in here. So it says pit bomb, napalm for your skin, fighting the war against perspiration. <laughs> and then a little ad for sunshine autos. And I remember flying the planes in this game was so much fun. It, it was I feel like one of the first games apart from like a flight simulator that really had that option where it felt really good. And again, the appeal of these games at the time I remember anyway, was it was just so huge. It was a true sandbox style game. If you wanted to go and find a plane and fly around, you could, if you wanted to steal a boat and go right around in the ocean, you could, it was just 
everything was available. Facts for the visitors. So again, this is just a little bit more. I'll, I'll, I'll hold this up to the camera. If you want to pause the video here and look through some of this, I just think this is really cool. This is a thick booklet, so I'm not going to read through everything, but they're just showing things like where you can go, how to use maps, uh, how money and hospitals work, how to get extra side jobs to earn some extra money in the game. We have areas of interest. There's Little Haiti, the beaches, Ocean Drive, Little Havana, Starfish Island, Downtown, and Vice Port. Uh, they still have, they have, again, they, they're treating this as if it's actually a tourist guide. They have places to stay, entertainment and nightlife. And again, I'll hold this up so you guys can, can check that out. The art here is so cool too, because it's the pages are designed like a tourist guide, but all of the images are actually like screenshots from the game shopping. Of course there's ammunition and, uh, and on a lot of these pages here, there are these fake ads, Howling Pete's biker emporium. BJ Smith, used autos, we can get you anything, tackling low prices with hot cars that go into some local businesses in the area. I'm sure that those are not shady at all. A little bit of local news. Now, okay, this is this is getting to something that I really love. The radio stations in Vice City were immaculate. There are a lot of songs that I still, to this day, would listen to that came out of Vice City. We got our our ad for one of those bands here, Love Fist. And then there's a little advertiser's index that shows, (laughs) again, just a bunch of ads the same way that you would see them placed in an actual guide. And I like, the the thing that I really love about this, this is a video game company, right? They, 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 They had some money behind this. They had some proven success behind Grand Theft Auto 3 and the previous Grand Theft Autos. They could have spent a lot of money, and I'm sure they did, but some of these look like bad ads that you would see in a local tour guide. There's a really bad taxidermy (laughs) ad. There's a movie ad, the Cherry Popper Ice Cream Company, and of course, I mean, it's it's a Grand Theft Auto game, so everything is some kind of an innuendo. Shaft hot dogs, the taste of a real man's meat. (laughs) It's so messed up. And now here's where we get more into those radio stations uh, that I was telling you about. So They have a ton of song credits back here, and it just goes on and on and on. And I also love that there were fake radio stations in here. It wasn't just, you know, you turn it on and there's one radio station that plays all these songs. It's like, no, there's different stations that play different types of music. And then, of course, we have some credits here in the back. And I love, love, love this because uh, this game had done well. Again, this is the greatest hits edition. And so they started to advertise Grand Theft Auto San Andreas in the back. Uh, coming 10 19 04 pre-order now to avoid disappointment and let me tell you grand theft auto san andreas was my jam i played san andreas probably more than any other game at the time when it did come out uh we'll do another episode on that because i'm pretty sure i have a complete and box copy of san andreas and then they do have uh descriptions of all of the characters that you see in this kind of round robin here but just like take a look at that art style that that's in my opinion that's like the iconic art style that you get from every Grand Theft Auto game. It's just kind of fun and cartoony. It It's not taking itself too seriously while at the same time somehow taking itself very seriously. I just mm, freaking love that. And with that, you guys, we're wrapping up another edition of the Nostalgic Gamers Club here on, uh, well, I was going to say here on Retro 9000. I did recently change the channel name to Who Invited Zach instead of Retro 9000 because I... Uh, I just kind of felt like it, but this is still retro. I mean, we still talk about retro stuff from the nineties and early two thousands. So, uh, super happy that you're here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. And, uh, if you didn't like this video, you know what? I appreciate you watching the thing anyway, because you know, you're, 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 you're entitled to not like a video. Maybe you just didn't, maybe you don't like my presentation style. That's fine. I get it. I ramble sometimes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.